ミニチュアローズによって王と共に爆死した。ナロズデッッッッッッ wow. He's alive. His lips look a little bit chapped. They gotta go straight for Pito. Oh, Peter's on the way, so. This is your moment. Wow, it's a really profound sacrifice. So, we are doing anime machines, but for love. How much of Poof will be left? That was amazingly effective. He looks so human. Oh, he likes it. He likes to taste some poof. This is such an honor. You're useful. Notice me, <laughs> Ed King. Uh, <laughs> okay. Why is this like. Why does this feel somehow graphic and obscene? That's all you. That's all Poof really needed. He just needed some nice words. This is such sweet music to a dependent person's ears. I only want to consume and destroy you. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not relatable on some level. I mean, it is very romantic. It's sort of a fantasy. To have someone that you adore to this level literally consuming you. I think that is actually a romantic archetype. Somebody really spectacular, amazing, can get anything they need, can have anything they want. This like pinnacle, ideal match, mate. Yet they only want you. They only come back to you. Speaking of beastly elements of human nature, not to put a judgment on it at all, I think the biological programming aspect of us is wired to seek mates of very high Mating potentials.、So、that can be any number of things. It can be physical attractiveness, it can be health, it can be resources, it can be leadership abilities, it can be just skill accumulating stuff and navigating the world, whatever. And we're probably wired to seek that because of evolutionary rewards and feedback, where offspring of people with all those things have much higher viability for both survival and reproduction. The trade off, of course, is that those people with those traits have a lot of options. And so, unlike what maybe is the case for a lot of couples, they're not hemmed in by a lack of choice. So, for them to be great partners, they need to be anchored to something much deeper, which is like real. Values or real deep admiration for you in the same way, which is obviously more difficult and so less abundant. So, attraction in this one sphere of things is this balancing act between like going as high as you can without. <laughs> Getting destroyed. And hence the fantasy that I think you find in a lot of works of romance, where you have found this sort of person and they only have eyes for you, you know? On an even more cynical side, a lot of fiction writers will exploit this by having the protagonist be just sort of average on this level of maximum relatability to the most number of people so that they can supplant themselves into this main character and then engage full heartedly in this fantasy. Not that it's not possible. Also, not that it's the most important thing. It can be a little bit frightening and disheartening to see or, or even experience in real life. I mean, even being the subject of this is a little bit weird. It might sound Sound great to be on the receiving end of that, but I think there could be something a little bit sickening about it because the person's not looking at you, they're looking through you, they're not seeing you, they're seeing what you do for them, they're, they're seeing you as an object of their own fixation and desires. I see this quite often <laughs> with a good friend of mine who's extraordinarily good looking. The way some people look at him, it's like he's a piece of meat, and it's weird because there's something enviable about that on a very, very basic level. At the same time, a broader picture, it's really not enviable. And you, you would think you want that, right? And I mean, given the choice, I might choose it, but it definitely has very weird trade offs that are. Not exactly pleasant and frankly can be a little bit depressing. But anyway, back to Poof. On this very <laughs> base. Primal lust, obsession, passion side of things. God, does it feel good to capture that person's attention to the point where you would be willing to like shed parts of yourself, healthy parts of yourself? You would be glad to be consumed by them because at least you have their full attention. At least you have them or you think you have them for a moment. Like my good looking friend, I see people just absolutely lose their minds. Like they're just sacrificing nice, good parts of themselves, their inner self esteem, their sense of self worth, their values, 
out the window just for another day of attention, which to basically any observer from the outside is like, ew, you know, but to that person, it's so worth it. It's a very powerful force. I don't know if Poof is even necessarily supposed to be romantic. That's just what I'm getting from it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's because of this. It's this. <laughs> Inappropriate. Uh, stop. Why is everyone giving the king their own meat? Suck on my finger? My finger juice? Oh no. Oh, I can see some jealousy brewing here. How does it compare to Poof? Oh, this is so much sweeter than the last guy, whoever that was. I only feast on this from now on. <laughs> what is that? I, this scene is so horrific, but actually I kind of love it. It's so interesting. Oh yes, Brother Juice. They're all related. Not you too, Yuppie. I expect this from Poof. <laughs> I expect this sort of depravity. Yeah, only all of the king. Okay. Wait until you taste pito. What does pito juice taste like? <laughs> You've made a powerful and very tiny enemy. Okay, all right, we're equals. King Obel started a, a war. Well, if there was ever any doubt, they would sacrifice for the king, which there really wasn't. I had a little bit more hope for Yuppie, but... The other way to read it that's more healthy than everything I just said is the Jesus route, where it's like, I'm so beyond myself in my love for something, real pure love for something, not because I need some sort of reward or, or have expectation, or I'm using this as a tool to get gratification from something I've deemed to be really high that therefore allows me to shine a light on what I want to believe about myself, etc. Or just some really, really high order thinking where there's no difference between myself and my brother. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. This sort of symbolic sacrifice, the ultimate form of giving and love. Maybe there's a little bit of that there. Maybe in varying different degrees for the three world guards or not even on the Jesus level, just, you know, like you would want to give to a parent or a child. The world guard being sort of a mixture of both for the king. I bet a lot of parents feel this way. I bet a lot of parents feel like their kids are feasting on their flesh. Just eating their lives. Why does Yubi get to hold him? Weird that he got defeated by this golden Buddha thing and he's reborn as this golden child. Destroyed by human atomic energy and hatred. Reborn by the love of his family? It's odd. He has become a golden god. He is... Is he the light? <laughs> is he gonna be the light in this arc? This... Oh, he's been reborn. Death and rebirth. Before I birthed myself. Sorry, Mom. Right, I mean, the Queen definitely felt that way. The Queen would have and did give, give him all of her flesh. This awakening that they're all having. <laughs> on the... On the ends of... Us nuking them. Right, yeah, yeah. That's really what it is, yeah. This is, this is really like of mythological religious proportions. They have become queens? <laughs> okay, sure. It's a different ant society that I can't wrap my mind around. Okay, to give Poof credit, maybe this experience of pure divine love washed out the other stuff. It's possible. Everything melts away in the purifying light of God's love. Why? We're going in the wrong direction. Like all shows, this is supposed to be human propaganda. Humans number one. We are the pinnacle, damn it. We are the queens. <laughs> Why is this happening? It's very uncomfortable for me. Can't we just smush some ants, like I said? Ants go smush? Wasn't that fun? You know, it's not bickering amongst, amongst themselves. The ants. That came full circle. Where do we go from here now, though, if we are Miriam? Fuck if you gave a lot of- You gave a lot of flesh. Thanks a lot, Netero. Netero <laughs> just unilaterally came in and did a lot of damage. The reason why I'm having trouble getting on board with it being like this beautiful thing is that it's only for a very specific figure. It's only for the king. If this were an understanding of the beauty of 
life. And I have no enemies Thorfinn style. And the person I'm looking at is just an extension of myself. This absolute adoration of human beauty, that would sort of be where I think the peak is. Also, while the king definitely did have a religious death and rebirth experience and had a sort of a reverse Last Supper, to this point, the godlike element of him is still largely physical capabilities. This is not a great comparison, but what comes to mind is things like Xerxes in the movie 300. He's a god king because of a big army, you know what I mean? Yes, it's tremendous. It feels a little bit too pinpoint focused. It was sort of a, a twisted religious ritual. Peter just missed everything. That pose, my confused pose, so glamorous, so elegant. It's being very open with them. That's that's good. That feels like a step back, but it probably actually is a step forward. You ate most of our appearances. You're, not, you're lying. Don't lie to me. <laughs> this is one thing I'm like unilaterally ag agreeing with the king on. I don't like this. What's best for me is always the truth. You adore me, you hold me in this high esteem, yet you think you need to control my actions? That doesn't make sense. How the king goes from here is interesting, very telling. Alright, give me the rest. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this actually makes him more dangerous. A cowardly human Netero. Yeah, I mean, it's true. He wasn't planning on killing him, he just wanted to sit and talk. Yes, this is beautiful, pure, unconditional love. Whoops. So much for pettiness being washed away in the light of unconditional love. There is something very religious about this. One thing I've noticed about spiritual communities, even spiritual communities that are really dedicated to beautiful, good things and want to pursue an understanding of greater beauty and connection with the world and with others and are really rigorous and grounded and high aiming. There's always at least some of the community that is way downstream of it and is there for something else. It looks the same on the surface. It looks like devotion and faith. What it probably is, is yet again, just so much self gratification. You pick up on it when you hear people talk about how holy they are, trying to outdo one another about how holy they are. Like it's really not competitive, right? Or they say all the right things, but then don't really live in accordance with the things they're talking about. Or it's very contextual. It's like when they're in the community, they're like this. And when they're out of the community, they're like this. Another sign is when their personality changes, depending on whether or not they're talking to someone else in the community versus like a higher up in the community, right? Where suddenly they're groveling, which any spiritual leader worth his or her salt will, will notice, you know, it ends up being not really that different from any other pursuit. I mean, it may as well be a status battle with designer handbags or what have you. This is still not unconditional love, right? Maybe the king kills Poof, or maybe Pito and Poof fight. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Don't they share thoughts? Oh, he has wings now. He was missing that before. It was a glaring physical weakness. It's the Yuppie juice. That literally was no time. <laughs> he backed that up. I like how flying is only five minutes faster than running at full speed. Poof doesn't know that they're on their way. He's a danger. Could go great, could go terribly. He needs to meet Kamugi again. Map said 50 minutes, I'll be there in 10. Five! There's... That's a Smith-like gamble. 
She really has become the queen. Whoa! There you go! Just lying in the wings! Good. Oh, yeah! Right, he came down the stairs. He discovered her. Wow, they've been keep track this whole time. What's the what's with the fish thing? <laughs> Why the fish? You just got palmed and bankrupted. Oh wow, it immediately goes to his main body. What an image. <laughs> yep, it's happening. It's happening. The confrontation. We're all gonna meet in the middle, probably. Oh boy. <laughs> Things are heating up. This is such an amazing character episode. There's something so haunting about the whole ritual they did, the religious symbolism, and this like dark cultish element of Poof. He's such an interesting character. There's so much going on. I mean, I think it's clear it's mostly not pure love, right? It doesn't exclude the possibility that it's there. It's also so real. Like there's something so real about Poof. I know him, or like he's an amalgamation of many things that I know, both that I've witnessed and also seen it myself. Just like in a very, very extreme version of it. He is that person in the in the church or spiritual community that is looking at the finger and not the moon, right? Trying to drain the attention of the, the central figure not getting the actual important message the whole i'm gonna kill kamugi before we can see her really solidified the whole thing also for some reason that chapter 7 bankruptcy punch was one of the most satisfying blows in this arc so far just that out of nowhere palm assisted yakuza uppercut is magical i think part of why i feel so good is because he's literally on his way to kill kamugi this innocent girl and then he gets blasted it's also a really nice moment for palm who's you know weird obsessive nature that's reflected somewhat inner power, is being used really well. It's really important. The light and darkness in this art comes from very strange places. <laughs> like Miriam is potentially, maybe has some element of being the light, though it's not clear. Like Netara said, he's sort of wavering between two different things. Gon is the darkness. <laughs> In a large way. Pedro has elements of pure love. Yupi has elements of honor. I mean, Knuckle is the light, but that, I mean, that's obvious from the beginning. And then, like, Palm. Palm, the character who has been drawn, shattered in darkness and stabbing voodoo dolls and crazy coloring. <laughs> She's the light. She, you know, she contains elements of the light and caring about people. Like I said last time, I think what gives me a lot of reservations about the invading party is as good as they are, as much beauty as they have and as much as I love their characters, there's something that casts them in shadow by virtue of the fact that they're, the way I see it, subservient to Gon in a key sense. They have to get out from behind his shadow and it's unclear how that will come to pass.